Jurassic World, the soft reboot of Jurassic Park that came out 14 years later after the third installment of the franchise. Why does the CGI bird look actually worse than the actual dinosaurs? And that's something that we have today. This mother is packing luggage for her two boys. Ray Mitchell, her 11 year old, a huge fan of dinosaurs, and Zach, her 16 year old, the most annoying person in the entire movie. I, I love see you. See you later. Vamanos. Bye. Okay. Bye. Wow, girl, take a hint. That was painfully embarrassing. The parents drop off their kids. What is not in the forefront of the movie is that these two are actually getting a divorce and they don't wanna go through all of that with the kids there. Besides, it's easier for them to just drop their kids off to have a good time at Jurassic World because the wife's sister works at Jurassic World. Claire Deering is a park manager. And as the brothers head off to Jurassic World or Isla Nublar, the island from the first movie, all this asshole can do is just stare at people. That's like 50 tons of food a week. Me what a shame. This guy's got no game. Seriously, like a considerable amount of that movie, whenever that person is in it, he's not even important enough to remember his name. That's all he's doing. Being a freaking creep and just staring at girls without saying anything. What is he, contemplating on ways to kill them? Anyway, the brothers arrive at Isla Nublar. Their aunt, Claire Daring, sends her assistant to pick them up because she's just too busy. One thing I do like about this movie is it lets you see what John Hammond envisioned for his park from the first movie. As a matter of fact, you can even watch the first movie and go on to watching this one. Damn, you know, the composer, this is gonna be his legacy because every time I hear that, I get freaking chills. It's so beautiful. And even though the music was a little bit overpowering as they were leading into the segment, when he opens up the doors and you see the park, it really makes it kind of bittersweet for John Hammond. I mean, he's long gone by now. Last time we saw him was in the second movie, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. But since a man named Masrani took over and made his dream come true. We're then introduced to Claire, the park manager. She set to meet with investors on a new dinosaur she's working on. Let's be honest, no one's impressed by a dinosaur anymore. Or maybe these are the press people. Regardless, the investors want something new. They want something more exciting. And regular dinosaurs aren't gonna cut it. So they decide to cook up something else. The Indominus Rex. That dinosaur is going to be the first genetically modified hybrid. Dr. Wu cut in and let them know that they specifically designed her that way. He specifically designed her that way. That black turtleneck is always his look, no matter what he's wearing. They claim that every time they put out a new asset or a new dinosaur, want to come and see it. But then I'm thinking, okay, you have a lot more dinosaurs that you can touch that you have not shown and are not even on InGen's list, yet you don't go for those you go straight to the hybrids which is like dude like where where are all the others you could release a new dinosaur every freaking year and have decades left of content to get or people coming to your park later claire meets up with her nephews you could tell she hasn't seen them in a long time because she doesn't even know how old they are or how to even talk to them zach last time i saw you you were like three four years ago uh seven seven years but you know close you know, he is such an asshole, I can't stand his character. He's worse than the kids in the first movie. With lips that literally look like Panani on your face, you should not be that much of a douchebag. You're not that good looking. Jesus Christ. Anyway, she blows off the kids because she's got stuff to do. Even though she hasn't seen them in a long time, Gray is visibly sad because he thought that she'd at least be spending time with them. I know, right? Like, she's such a bitch. Hey, it's the guy from New Girl. The new park owner is Simon Mizrani. He really reminds me of John Hammond. He's got a sparky personality. He's very sweet and lovable, but also not that great with money. Understandably, he wants Claire to just enjoy herself and not to talk about cash and money all the time. After all, that's what the park is for. He is still training to fly a helicopter, and I'm sorry, I don't care who you are, I am not getting into a freaking helicopter if you yourself or not an expert with it. Like that's something for you and your flight instructor, but me, no. He goes to assess the asset, but it's staying hidden for some reason. Claire also reveals later that there were actually supposed to be two of these things, but the one that's in there now ate its sibling. His creature is intelligent, but they have no idea how much. Claire assures him that they have the best structural engineers, but this guy claims that Hammond did as well, and those dinosaurs still went apeshit over there. But Ms. Ronnie wants more assurance, so he asks Claire to bring in Owen Grady, the raptor trainer, to check over the paddock. This is where we meet the raptor squad, led by Blue, the lead raptor we can see here in front. Owen Grady, aka Star-Lord, is their trainer. He helped raise 
raise these raptors from birth. And they listen to him so long as he's not in the cage. This guy, who I saw later in Godfather of Harlem, is actually more annoying in this movie. And all he can think about is militarizing the dinosaurs. Because they can go places that humans can't go. Wouldn't that power be awesome? Yeah, drones and robots can do the same thing. And they don't need to necessarily be fed as much as dinosaurs do. And they're also not unpredictable. Where do these people get off with these stupid crazy ideas for dinosaurs? Owen and his friend can't stand this guy. While they're all talking about military nonsense, something horrible happens. Finally, some action. Some idiot that clearly shouldn't be working around these animals falls inside the enclosure. Inside the enclosure with with the raptors. All four of them. Now realistically, in this kind of situation, this guy should have been dead already. But that can't happen because this is where we get to see Owen in action. We get to see him be a badass and save this kid. <laughs> jumps into action, runs straight up to the raptors to defend the guy and is like, stop! Meanwhile, the kid is dragged to safety by Owen's friend Barry. Owen holds the raptors in place, but they don't look very happy that he got in between them and their lunch. And while Owen's dropping a sweat, he goes in between the gate and that's when the raptors decide to come and try to, I guess, eat him. Meanwhile, this idiot has his back up against the gate. You just saw those things collide into the gate and you're gonna put your back up against the gate when you know those things have claws and teeth and oh my god, dude like this is what i'm talking about this is what i'm talking about legs dangling in the water syndrome after being chased by a shark do people not have common sense ever wonder why there was a job opening don't ever turn your back to the cage <laughs> is exactly what I'm talking about. Still, a little bit too close for my liking. Everything seems to be going well, a petting zoo for baby dinosaurs. I thought that was a therizinosaurus for a sec. Is it a therizin? I don't know. Maybe it's a gallimimus. Who knows? We get to see Rexy eating. Yes, it's the first dinosaur from the first movie, the T-Rex. And while the kids broke free from their assistant, Claire goes to go meet with Owen. Can he be any more blue-blooded American? He trains animals, he's drinking coke, he has big guns, he looks rough around the edges, and he's working on his motorcycle. He really is a character. Apparently these two used to date, but she's just too good for him. He's all about, listen, the animals are animals. They're not just numbers on a spreadsheet. They have lives. They want to do things that we want to do, like have children and have children and make more children. That's why angles are important. Because from this angle, she looks like she's like 10 years older. Zack and Gray are at the most sorest tank. Zack is there, but not there at the same time. He's ogling the picture of his girlfriend he left at home that he doesn't even care about. That girl is way too clingy. But I guess two birds of a feather flock together, or birds of a feather flock together. Yeah, I don't think it matters how many birds there are. But they're both freaking weird. He's creepy, she's clingy. They're meant for each other. Meanwhile, Gray is trying to get his brother into liking the park. Like he's never been here? Or maybe he has, I don't know. But Gray he certainly hasn't been there, so he tries to get him interested in what's going on. He doesn't have to work very hard, because when they see that Mosasaurus chomp down on that shark, it's a sight to behold. <laughs> Now they're enjoying themselves. Zack asks his brother if he wants to continue having fun and see something else cool. It's good to see him actually be a person. How many freaking Benzes are they gonna have in this movie? Jesus. You know, I blame the Lost World for starting that. Anyway, Claire brings Owen back to the Indominus Rex enclosure, where they discover that she's gone. They have thermal regulators, but it doesn't look as though they can read the dinosaur's heat signature. The guy's like, look, I didn't see anybody come out, but clearly no thermal signatures are in that enclosure. When they inspect the cages, they see claw marks going up the wall of the cage or the enclosure oh dear it seems as though this dinosaur has escaped then after you've watched the movie a few times, or you remember the nagging feeling that's at the back of your brain telling you that this makes no sense, magic starts to die down a little bit. Finding out that the Indominus Rex has escaped from her enclosure, Claire calls the scientist people at the scientist center, or the ones responsible for kind of like managing things over the internet and the cameras, and she asks them to check for the beacon, because every dinosaur has a tracker on it. When they check for the tracker, it's still in its conclosure. So why didn't you do that in the beginning? Why did you let Owen and the other guy go inside the enclosure? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Owen and the others are working at this place too. Nespa. So if that's the case, why is it that Owen, nor the other guy, nor Claire, nor any of these people had the gall or the freaking intelligence that they would need working with animals like this that can kill people to check the cage to see 
if it was still in there with the beacon. Like, that's one of the first things you would check. Even if they didn't know that the thing could camouflage, I would still expect them to check. It has a beacon sensor tracky thing. If I didn't have my dog and I realized that my dog had gotten out or something, and I'm like, oh my god, my dog is not in the backyard. The first thing I would do if I have like a GPS tracker or Apple tag thing on it is I would check that first to see where my dog is. I wouldn't just fly out in the street with my car like an idiot looking for my dog when I have a very real live way of tracking where the dog is. These people are annoying. This was bad writing and added just to give drama so people can go in the cage and the creature can escape. Still doesn't make sense though because while they're in there they find out that the Indominus Rex indeed is still in her cage. Apparently she could camouflage. Snatchy poo one of them are dead now. Owen is running for his life. Why is that gate open? Isn't there a smaller gate that humans can go through? Why is the big gate open? <sighs> Until you've located the dinosaur, what is the sense of having the big gate open at that time? Are these people insane? The dinosaur breaks free. Owen hides and spills fuel on himself so the dinosaur won't care that he's there. This poor guy gets eaten. So Owen throws fuel on himself thinking that the dinosaur won't be able to smell it. Indy, the Indominus Rex, is supposed to be super intelligent. She knows he's under there. You flipped over the other car to get to the other human, but even though he smells like fuel, never enters your mind as an intelligent dinosaur, like supremely intelligent, to flip over this car too, or at least look under it. You just use your no- you just- you <sighs> Don't get me wrong, I really love this movie. Not as good as the first one, but I enjoyed the movie. But I've watched it enough times, and it's fun to poke stuff at things, because that makes it even more entertaining when you go back and watch movies like the sixth time and realize how much foolishness you ignored or you didn't process until later in the sake of all the pretty pictures and dinosaurs that were on screen. And that's how they're meant to be enjoyed. But still, can we raise the bar a little bit for these movies so other people can enjoy them too? And it will be easier to suspend disbelief. While Barry is taking care of the raptors, Hoskins, the military guy who wants raptors to be soldiers, is saying that now that this thing's escaped, we can send the raptors after them. All the other park goers have no idea what's happening. Oh my god, here goes creepy 101 again. Staring. Just, what the f- what is going on? You know what would be funny if he was actually looking at these girls and them staring back at him was actually what he was seeing in his head? And in reality, they're like laughing at him and feeling all weirded out? Like, look at them! Are they speaking some other language that we can't hear? Is he telepathic? Poor Gray is crying because he thinks his parents are gonna get a divorce. Yes, they are. Notice how there's a lot of divorce and unhappy couple themes in these movies? First, it was Alan Grant because he didn't want to have kids. Wait, no, it was Ian Malcolm who got divorced. In the second movie as well, in the third movie, the Kirby's got a divorce. In this movie, these kids' movies are getting divorced. What is it with these Jurassic Park movies and divorces? She marked up that wall as a distraction. She wanted us to think she escaped. Okay, easy with the conspiracy theories. While that might be true, it is also possible that she used it as a scratching pose. And because she didn't want people watching her or maybe she was on her period, whatever was going on, she could have just stopped her thermal thing because regular animals do that sometimes, could have been particularly hot. And all those things coincided to make it look like she escaped. I did do a video a very long time ago on the possibility that the Indominus Rex isn't as smart as we initially thought she was. Sure, she's intelligent, but not that intelligent. She might be, but it's also possible that she's not. Just like these characters, human beings have a bad habit of placing human qualities and thought processes on animals when they are actually way more simple. The squad is sent out out to go retrieve the Indominus Rex, who has been killing everything in her path, including other dinosaurs. They find the tracker, and they're shocked to find that the tracker has been torn out of her. They claim, oh my god, look, she tore it out! It could also be possible that you think she tore it out because she knew where you guys put it, but the other possibility I came up with if we're going with the notion that she's probably just a regular animal is that when you activated the tracker, because from my understanding, the tracker's not running all the time, that's why Claire had to call them up to go and check, and only when they checked, they accessed the tracker. I don't know why they wouldn't have it running all the time, I think that's a little bit important. But when you think about it, the Dinosaurs are in their enclosure, so what need would they have for the tracker to be running all of the time? Who knows how long the batteries in these things last? So to save money, they probably would only activate the tracker when something needs to be tracked. Maybe it's on standby, like when you lock your phone, and then when you need your phone again, you pick it up and you unlock it. It's possible that when they activated the tracker, it started making a beeping noise inside of her, and she didn't like how that felt or sounded, so she tore it out. Then they find out, oh yes, she can camouflage. Get 
Mother! Why did they kill the Asian dude first? I mean, technically they killed the Hispanic one first, but still. She kills basically all of those guys. And oh yes, bullets apparently never work on these things. Was Ronnie very unhappy with the outcome blames Dr. Boo, who tells him that, yo dude, you're the one who asked for this. Was Ronnie is livid and says he never asked for monsters. To which Dr. Wu replies, nothing in Jurassic Park is natural. They've never been natural. And if they had been, they would look a lot different than how they look now. Was Ronnie's the one that asked for more teeth, not for real dinosaurs. When they try to explain away her behaviors and things she can do, the thermal regulation from the amphibian stuff and the ability to camouflage from the jellyfish stuff, you realize that this creature is basically a chimera. And she's happily taken on the traits of some of those animals used to create her. Can't blame Dr. Wu for this one. Zack and Gray are having fun in the gyrosphere, but when they see an open path, they figure the door is open, so why not? This is where they come face to face with the Indominus Rex. Cindy is having fun and attacking every dinosaur, but the Anki proves to be a very hard opponent. She doesn't notice the kids in the gyrosphere until their Aunt Claire starts calling them on the phone. Don't worry, nothing happens to them because they're children in a Jurassic Park franchise. Somehow, because of the scene in the situation where they clearly should be dead, it makes me feel as though the Indominus Rex is not that scary. Like it was scary before, but now seeing this, I'm like, okay, that situation, somebody should have at least been hurt and everyone got out without a freaking scratch. Yeah, I can't take this dinosaur seriously. <laughs> See what I mean? They run for their lives and jump over a waterfall with a lot of coaxing from the big brother. You see a dinosaur running after you and you have to be coaxed to jump over a waterfall when its jaws are snapping at your ass. I don't get that part. Another product placement. While Claire has Owen helping her not only to get the asset but also to get her nephews, they find all the dinosaurs that have been killed and marred in the Indominus Rex's wake. That's gotta be pretty expensive. While they're tracking down the kids, Claire and Owen, of course, Suki Suki, become all lovey-dovey sort of again. The two brothers find the old facility. A lot of nostalgia for the scene. They find an old Jeep, the one from the first movie from 20 years ago. And somehow it works. This place is abandoned. Even if they had gas here, why would the gas still be good? <laughs> Bullshit. How is there not tire rot and congeal fuel? You know what? Forget it. Owen and Claire catch up to where the boys were, but they're a little bit too late. They've also been followed by the Indominus Rex, who knows exactly where they are. Shouldn't his fuel smell like cloak the area and be unattractive to the Indominus Rex? I guess he sweated off the fuel. I guess her smell is overpowering his. And I guess she can also see them there. The Indominus Rex is not a fool. It knows they're in there and she tries to get in through the roof, but her chase is cut short. But <laughs> Mizrani, the person who is still learning to fly a helicopter, is the one in control of the aircraft to chase after the Indominus Rex, who's headed for the birdcage with all of the flying reptiles. They shoot everything they have at this thing, and for some reason, it doesn't work, and they can't hit her not once. When she gets in the Pteranodon enclosure, she irritates them. She snaps at the Dimorphodons and sends them flying into the air through the hole she crashed through. They head straight for the helicopter and the other guy dies. Zrani tries to get control, but he can't. And this is freaking heartbreaking because he didn't have to die. Why was he in control of the helicopter? I'm not saying in that situation, if somebody else had been in control of the helicopter, things would have been better, but they might have been. Jesus. I really liked Mizrani, and it's so unfair. I just, this character was just introduced, and then he just dies. Because someone decided it was a great idea to throw him in the pilot seat of the freaking helicopter. <sighs> Now that the flying reptiles are out, they begin assaulting everyone at the park. It is total pandemonium. Zara, Claire's assistant, who was supposed to be babysitting the kids who lost them because they got rid of her, is living her worst nightmare as these things play toss the ball with her body. They dunk her in the water and they all fight over the poor woman. And to top it off, while one of them is carrying her back into the air, the Mosasaurus comes up and eats both of them. Owen and Claire are there and they make it out without a scratch. Of course they do. Claire saves Owen by shooting one of these things off of him. And then they, then they, okay. When she meets up with her nephews, to them, she's acting like a totally different person, all warm and gushy, because she's happy to see them, and they've only known her to be a cold, calculating person. Hoskins is like, you know what? Now that the boss is dead, you know, it is what it is, and he gave consideration for this project anyway, let's get Raptors on the ground to trace this thing. This is the field test that I've always wanted, and this is the perfect time to do it. So against Owen's wishes, they get the Raptors ready. They put K2 
cameras on them, product placement, and they set them up to get out of the gate like horses. Owen is screaming at Hoskins and is not happy, but Hoskins is like, listen, this is happening with or without you. Owen reassures Blue, his favorite raptor, who is also the alpha of the pack, him being the alpha out of all of them, and they finally are able to run free for the first time. Owen on his motorcycle, riding amongst his raptors. And that's supposed to be like the coolest scene out of the whole movie. <laughs> Boyfriend's a badass. The raptors have found a scent. It's the Indominus Rex. She comes out and starts talking to them. Oh no, that thing is part raptor. Well, the raptors have a new alpha and they attack everything and everyone else. That's right, now you're John Hammond. I do have a theory about this as well. I made a video about that as well because I don't think the raptors ever really turned on Owen. Owen sees Charlie, the youngest raptor, and lowers his weapon. See, Charlie's not attacking Owen, but it doesn't matter because Charlie gets her lights blown out when a missile flies into her persons. She's dead. That's very sad because it just came out of nowhere. When Barry, Owen's friend, is hiding inside of a log, Blue was trying to get to him until she hears her name. At that point, she stops attacking. After one of the soldiers comes back and gets killed by a raptor, Claire freaks out and takes off with the product placement. These raptors don't know Claire, so they are trying to attack her. And you can tell how fast these raptors can run. You know how fast this truck is going, but if it's going about 40, 50 miles per hour, they're keeping up and overtaking it. The kids are able to keep the raptors away. Of course they are. Hoskin makes a plan with Wu and claims they have to remove the dinosaur embryos from Isla Nublar in order to protect Wu's research. Meanwhile, people are getting evacuated from the island. Claire Owen and Claire's nephews reach the lab where they see some weird things including all of Dr. Wu's people securing the embryos. Hoskins gives a big speech, and that's when you know something bad's gonna happen. Is the gift- <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Easy? <laughs> Yo, he really looked like he was scared of that part. Oh my god, that's great. Notice how the raptor comes in between Owen and this guy. She completely ignores the very obvious easy target, which are the kids. She goes after him. Could be because he's alone, but the way she comes in between Owen and him makes me believe that she's still following Owen. Owen is still her papa, and this guy looks menacing, and she can also tell that Owen doesn't like him. I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> Zack and Gray take that opportunity to get away, but unfortunately they are cornered off by the raptors. But Blue has no intention of hurting Owen. See, she never turned on Owen. They were straight. There is someone who's not happy about that. Indy, the Indominus Rex. There are only three raptors left as Charlie had been killed. Indy tells the other raptors to kill Owen and his friends. She's like, no, hell with you. All right then, bitch. Poor Blue is knocked out or presumed to be dead. Her sisters do not take kindly to this and attack. Reliving the scene from the first Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> trying to get a clear shot to help out his raptor friends, the Indominus Rex already having killed another one of them, the two brothers are hiding inside the gift shop. Claire runs off because she has an idea. The Indominus Rex kills off the last two raptors, barbecuing one and chomping another, and the bullets apparently are not working. Owen goes in the gift shop with the kids. Meanwhile, Claire is outside the T-Rex enclosure, telling one of the workers, who is basically the comedic relief of the movie, to open the cage. This is a scary, haunting, and beautiful scene as you can see the T-Rex his eyes glowing in the dark. This is Rexy, a T-Rex I just showed you from the first movie. You can see her age has caught up to her and she's a lot more gaunt than she was before. You wonder why Claire is taking this long to move, considering that this same T-Rex in the first movie could easily catch up to a Jeep that was going about 40 miles per hour. It was catching up and keeping up with this vehicle. Well, we clocked the T-Rex to 32 miles an hour. Yes. I know, but that type of speed, you would expect Claire to have a good enough running start before this thing starts chasing after her. She should have been dead. Now, <laughs> excuse my cynical self, but this part of the movie just makes me want to tear all the hair from out of my tail. This Indominus Rex is a very powerful dinosaur. And when it goes in and grabs the fanny pack, first of all, the kid's ball should have been ripped off. Like there is no way the dinosaur was that delicate 
and with such precision was able to just take his strap. That claw should have gone straight through his groin to the other side of his body. He would have been impaled. But let's say it just got the strap of his fanny pack. You mean to tell me that his brother and Owen holding him back and the dinosaur is shaking trying to get the... Holy shit, man. What the... Why did they write the movie like this? Jesus Christ. Why are you crying, bitch? Nothing is gonna happen to you. Clearly. This is the worst part of the movie for me. I cannot forgive this part of the movie. It's so freaking dumb. A dinosaur that is basically as heavy as a T-Rex, if not heavier. <gasps> uses his claw to impale other creatures and tear people up is struggling is shaking to get this kid's fanny pack off of him what are you doing why god so all of this i i could i forget i could forgive if all of that was taking place in like half a second which i highly doubt but it wasn't because what was going on in the gift thing was not going on in slow motion her running with the t-rex was Give me a freaking break. The Indominus Rex and the Tyrannosaurus Rex meet each other. They have a gruesome fight and the Indominus Rex wins. Rexy is old and she's just no match for the Indominus, who is taking her sweet time about to bite Rexy just enough for the plot to allow her to be interrupted. Here comes Blue, who is enraged that this thing has killed her sisters and tried to kill her. Rexy breaks in and they all fight. Raptor and T-Rex fighting together, which is honestly really badass. Because both of these creatures just had enough of the Indominus' shit. The Indominus Rex is bested. You gotta admire the stamina that this creature has. She's been running all day, being shot at, fought other dinosaurs, and was in this fight with the T-Rex and still has money to go. But her time is up. <laughs> She is carried to the depths of Mosa's enclosure, never to be seen again, drowned and killed, the poor thing. Blue the Velociraptor and Rexy the T-Rex have an understanding. Rexy doesn't see the raptor as a threat or maybe because she's standing still she can't see her, but she walks away limping into the wilderness. Owen is proud of Blue. Having taken off her collar, he tells her it's time to go. Poor Blue. She's been with her sisters her whole life and now Owen is not even gonna stay with her. I think probably what they were saying there, maybe I was wrong the first time, but I thought he was just saying, no, don't eat my friends. But I think what he was probably saying is no blue um i can't come with you that's what i'm guessing was happening there because she was waiting on him and where she was going he couldn't follow so sadly blue turns away and heads off to her new life in isla nublar a lot of people were killed and hurt but the two children's mom comes to find them and they hug their children and they live happily ever after except that the parents get divorced there hugs her sister and yeah we get a send-off by rexy roaring over her new kingdom <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the end. Not the best Jurassic Park movie, but when it came out, we were also happy to see that Jurassic Park was continuing. That you forget all the stupid things about it. Still, it's fun to make fun of it, though. I think the biggest issues with the movie was its writing. The dialogue wasn't even that terrible. Just the writing and some of the explanations for why people did things or how people did things was just ridiculous. It's becoming a running gag with Jurassic Park movies, so I guess we should just get used to it. I really do hope Jurassic World Dominion is a little bit better. At the time I made this video, it wasn't out, so we shall see. Huh? Check that video out later. Me doing a video review on Jurassic Park Dominion. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.